Hi everyone, welcome to the next Science 8 review video. Today we're going to be looking at contour maps. So these maps that we're going to be checking out today are solely representative of mountains or elevation, something to do with height above the land. So in order to start refreshing our memory before we start um, doing this, you might remember these little things called ISO lines, right? Now in this map we have to draw four, five, six, seven, and eight. So remember, you want to connect the dots with the same numbers and an ISO line represents a point of equal value. So if I were to show you the fours, I would go like four to four to four and then here, and then here, and then here. And we'll complete the fours by coming back around this side. Sort of like that. So all of those areas that that line hits has a value of four. So then we would do five, six, seven, and eight. So five would look something like this. Remember for five, you gotta go between the four and the six. like that and then six so you'd be going between five and seven and then the sevens would go between six and the eight and then the eights would be the last one so there's your little isoline map connecting points of equal value so the maps we look at today are gonna look like the isoline maps as you can see on the right they're only gonna be measuring height or elevation because they're called contour maps. Contour maps are composed of contour lines which are special ISO lines that only measure elevation and elevation means height. It's the height above sea level. Sea level is always zero so the ocean is considered zero elevation and then if there's a mountain near the ocean we would measure the mountain starting from the level of the ocean so maybe this is a thousand feet the feet represent a thousand feet above sea level which is zero which is the ocean so there's this thing called the contour interval the interval is what the line goes up by what each line goes up by So, can you figure out what each of these lines go up by? They give, they give you um, one every five lines. So here's 100 and here's 200. So what do each of the lines represent? How much? Well, you count. So if there's 100 to 200, it goes up probably by 20s. So this should be 120, 140, 160, 180, and 180, and there it is, 200. So the contour interval is 20. Now they didn't give us a unit for this map, so we don't know if it's 20 feet, 20 miles, 20 meters, we don't know. So we just say 20 for now. All right, you try. What's the contour interval of this map? What do the lines go up by? All right, well, hopefully you said 10. So here's 20, this one would be 30, this one would be 40, 50, 60, and 70. So they go up by tens. So we're talking about elevation today. Here's some signs that you might see, probably not on Long Island, but around the world. You could have below sea level, you could have above sea level, but it's all height. So contour maps are really useful because they're able to show hills, rivers, mountains, and cliffs, and even flatland on a map. It's really good for hiking, it's good for skiing. There's a lot of people that use these map, uh, real estate agents, geologists, people that need to study the landscape of an area. So generally, if you're talking about a hill or a mountain of some sort, there's a bunch of circles on the map. The smaller the circle, the higher the height. So for example, if you put an X here, and then you put an X here, which person would be at a higher height? Well, it would be the person in the smallest circle. Because if you think about this, these lines go up by tens, right? So this is 50, this would be 60, 70, 80, 90, and then 100, and then this would be 110. This X is in between 50 and 60, so they're standing at maybe like 55. 
this X is inside the 110 circles, so they're standing at maybe like 115. So their, their X is higher than that X. So here's a question for you. Give me an estimate of what B could be. What elevation would a person at letter B possibly be? Well, B is in between the 80 and the 90, so anywhere between that is good. So 81 through 89. It can't be 80 because then B would be on the line. And it can't be 90 because then B would be on this line. It's in between 80 and 90. So 81 through 89, anywhere in there is good. All right, so how do you show flat land on a map? The flat land is represented by contour lines that are spaced very far apart, like at letter L, this is a flat area, as opposed to letter N, this would be a steep area. Steep is like a cliff. That's because the lines are close together. So when the lines are close, it's a cliff. When the lines are far, it's flat or gentle. So that's important. Lines far, flat, lines close, cliff. Okay, so if I give you a compass right now, north, south, east, west, which side of this mountain is going to be the steepest? Well, hopefully you said the east side because the lines are closest together. So this is the steep side. And then over here is the gentler slide because the lines are further apart. So this is like flatter over here. And this is cliffy over here. Cliffy. Steeper. <laughs> All right. How do you find the, the highest height of a hill? Well, you got to do a little math. It's not that bad. So say they want to know, okay, if I have two circles here and I'm at location A, what's the highest height I could possibly be at? Well, here's how you do it. You say, okay, you look at the contour line, you, you figure out the interval, so these go up by tens, right? They go up by tens. So this is 30, 40, and then you ask yourself, what would the next line be if there were to be one? Well, the next line would be 50, but it's not there. So to figure out the highest that A could possibly be, you just do the next line minus one. So the highest A could possibly be is 49. And the reason for that is it can't be 50 because then they would have to draw a 50 line and there is none. It can't be 40 because then A would be on the 40 line. So all of the numbers that A could possibly be is anywhere, A could be anywhere from 41 to 49. We can't prove which one it is. It can't be 40 because then A would be on the 40 line and it can't be 50 because then they would draw 50. So out of the, this range, this number here is called the maximum because it's the highest that A could be and this number here is called the minimum because it's the lowest that A could be. All right, we're gonna do another one. So let's draw, we'll do two circles, one, two, and we'll say the contour interval is uh, 50 feet, and let's say this is zero, and this is 50, and I want you to tell me what's the maximum and minimum that letter L could be. Okay, so let's see how you did. So you do the same rules before. You figure out the contour interval, so it's 50. So 0, 50, and then you imagine, okay, what would the next line be? It would be 100, but it's not there, so the maximum is going to be 100 minus 1. So the highest that L could be is 99 feet. The lowest it could be, it can't be 50 because then it would be on the line. So the lowest number that this could be is 51 feet. 
So the range that L could be is anywhere from 51 feet to 99 feet. All right, I'm gonna do one more. Let's do circle, circle. So let's do the contour interval is 100 feet this time. And we'll say this is 300 feet, this is 400 feet, and then we're gonna do letter L again. So I want the minimum and the maximum for L. Go for it. All right, well, it goes up by 100, so 300, 400, so the next line would be 500. So the highest that L could be is 499 feet. And the lowest it could be is one above the last contour line, so 401 feet. So there's your range. It can be 401 to 499. All right, cool. So we did maximum, minimum. So now we're gonna talk about rivers. How do you show a river on a map with just lines? Well, there's a little trick. The contour lines on the map, these lines bend when they cross the river. They always bend upstream. Upstream means where the water's coming from. So if I were to draw you a little picture here, say there's a river, there's a guy fishing, right? Here's the fish. Now, the fisherman here is fishing in the water, and the river, water is coming from this way. And it's going here. Say it's going into like a lake or a pond, right? So upstream is against the water. It's where the water is coming from. So this is going to be upstream. And this is going to be downstream. So if I were to draw a compass on this right here, the west would be upstream and the east would be downstream. Upstream means where the water is coming from, and downstream means where it's going. Okay, so now if we go back here, the contour lines bend upstream. So if we do example one over here, and I draw a little river right here, say the red line's the river and it goes across these lines, the blinds bend upstream like an elbow so this is bending I'll draw a compass for you this is bending northeast so this river is flowing this direction southwest because the elbow of the bend here is pointing upstream this is where it came from and it's going towards here. Okay, so now see if you could do it for example two. I wanna know which way is this stream flowing towards? And here's your river. Well, the contour lines bend upstream. So the bend here, right here, this is where it came from, which means the river is going this way. So this is flowing northeast. Okay, the bends always are where it came from. And if you're still confused, just look at these two pictures and I have it all labeled. Take a screenshot of it or something so you could keep figuring them out. Okay, so let's try a real map here. So let's do this area here. Here's the bends. I'm gonna erase these after, right? There's the bendy part of the lines. So which way is this flowing? Here's your compass. All right, well the bend in this case, the little pointy here is coming from here and it's going this way. So this is flowing southeast. 
How about this river here? Well, the bends are here. So it's coming from here and it's going down this way. So this one's flowing south. All right, last thing is holes in the ground. So if you're putting a mountain on a map, how do you what do you, how do you label a map if there's like a hole in the ground, like a big crater like this or maybe a volcano? What they do is they put little marks like here. These are called hasher marks. They're little dash marks. You can see them right in here. And the little dashes inside the circle, that represents that tells you that the area is going down. And they go down by the same interval of the map. So if the interval is 200 feet, these dashes will also represent a drop in elevation of 200 feet. A good thing that they use this for is to label volcanoes on map or a hole in the ground or like a sinkhole or like a, a crater or something like that. They had to figure out a way to label elevation decreasing. So they use hasher marks. Hasher marks are the little dashes inside the circle and it, all it means is that there is a hole in the ground and that the area is lower. All right. So that was your little intro on contour maps. I hope all is well, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.